Well, hello there, and today we have the man, the myth, the legend, Chicago. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, let's just jump straight into the first question. How did you find the entire experience of going to Stockholm, representing the USA, as well as meeting everyone in person for the first time? How was the entire experience? Yeah, I, th I think the one word I keep using to describe it, and it sounds like, you know, like the cliche word, but it's just surreal, honestly, that it happened. And it, it honestly went by so fast. Like, I, I can't believe it's already been a month mm. since I, like, flew out as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it just, everything was just such a, a whirlwind. And then, like, being able to meet everybody in person for the first time was also just, I, I blew my mind when I, like, walked into the GeoGuessr office and I see everybody in there just, like, mingling. It's, it was really, really great to see everybody. So I think overall, like, Putting GeoGuessr and my performance aside, I think, yeah, meeting everybody and just having that experience was something that, yeah, I, I will just cherish for the rest of my life. I remember the first day, I was completely lost. Not as lost as the, the Saturday, or well, the Sunday morning, whatever it was. But I was quite lost, uh, but I went to the main building and all you guys were there walking through, getting ready for... Well, there was a group A and group B first, and it was mm. just like, like I've never, I never met anyone, and I was just like a spectator. I'm like, this is just, it, 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 it didn't really hit me until the hotel. I don't know how long it took you for it to like sink in, but for me, it was like normal. I was just chatting to people like it was a VC, and then when the day was over, it was like, shit, that was something that probably would never happen again. You know, like that moment, the first time moment. Right. It's something you will always treasure forever. How did you find your first day? Or maybe, maybe when you were getting to Stockholm, like your travel, settling in, the media day, and then jumping into the games actually as well in the group stage? Yeah, I would say uh, overall my travel actually wasn't that bad. Um, I had to connect through Copenhagen, which was actually cool because I had never been to Denmark before. But yeah, it was like an overnight flight from Chicago to there. So I was pretty tired when we landed. Then I had the one more hour of flight. And then, yeah, like I was just like completely delirious when I got to the hotel. And I'm like the last person to arrive too. So then, like, I, I was just feeling really jet-lagged, like, seeing everybody in person that first day. Uh, yeah, I was, like, trying to power through, like, <laughs> not just fall asleep at dinner, which <laughs> I very much almost did that yeah. first night. But yeah, just, like, getting adjusted to the time difference and everything. Like, by the end of, uh, what day was that? Or Thursday, no, Thursday. I'd, like, pretty much gotten better, but yeah, like, it was pretty rough. I had a killer headache and just trying to practice and push through that as well. But finally, like, after about a day, I, I'd finally settled in. Yeah, you also had to deal with the really saturated monitors, didn't you, as well? That must be not, oh, not yeah. good for your headache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was something too. <laughs> yeah, it must have taken a while to settle in, like, even some of the lads, like, I remember Fungus, when I interviewed him, like, he had 30 hours of just no sleep during his travels. Mm. And obviously, like, he had Trabota and Zigzag, who travelled all the way from the other end of the world, quite literally. Yeah. So, like, there was quite a lot of players to travel so far, and it's, you know, get through all that jet lag, you know, you have the, have the media day where you're still doing a fair amount of stuff. I can, I can imagine just how tiring that can be. Jupiter yeah, Jupiter Radu, Wolf Trekker, May Potato, uh, and Anana. Anana, yeah, and that's yeah. it. Who did you play first, and how did you find that very first matchup? Yeah, uh, so I, it was actually kind of interesting, because I, I, I played Anana first, and... But, like, right before our match, my mouse for the computer that I was given, like, wasn't working at all. So oh, no. they had to, like, rush and find a replacement mouse. So I'd already gotten used to, you know, the one that we were supposed to be playing on. So then this was, like, completely different. So in our, like, the very first round of our moving game, it was, I think, in Slovakia. And I just, like, was trying to figure out the mouse the whole time. So I wasn't paying attention to the round. And I just guessed Czechia there instead. So I kind of had a shaky start. But I think overall I, I finally adjusted and got my head back into the game. Yeah. yeah, it was actually really close. Like, I just had a couple of pretty good 5Ks that really changed the game around, because otherwise Ad and I was, was leading for most of the games. So yeah, I think, yeah, I, I just, like, got through the, the mouse shake-up, and after yeah. that it was smooth sailing. It's, like, not the normal setup either. It's, like, I'm trying to remember who, who, set, who else said it on the interview, but it's, like, you got a different mouse, you got a different monitor, like, you're not in your room, like, it's a complete different environment. And also, like, with the cameras in front of your face, like, zooming in, zooming out, like... Like also port a potic man having to deal with all that, especially in this game. Like it must be like first it's like a first time experience, like usually you're just in your room and you got the cameras in front of you and you're like but yeah, like how did you find the cameras in front of your face throughout throughout the first day? How was all that? <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Definitely a first-time experience for me. Yeah, just like 
when I knew that my game was going to be broadcast, I'm like, oh man, they're going to bring these cameras over. And yeah, just, I, I didn't really know what I should do if I should be like staring straight at them or like doing some sort of, I don't, I don't even know. But say, so yeah, I just like tried to ignore it and just like try to stay level headed, like not think about I'm being broadcast to thousands of people right now. <laughs> yeah, like for example, you know, once like you lock in, you know, like if you look at the camera once, you're glued to the camera, like it's such a massive distraction. And once you look at the distraction, you're distracted and yeah. you're not going to fully lock in, I feel like it. I feel like anyone who looks at a camera and plays well, that's just fair play. But I feel like the best thing is probably just maybe do a cheeky wave and then just carry on. But you right, seem to yeah. have managed it well, especially for your first game. Being known, it was broadcasted as well. Everyone's just staring at the screen, ju- judging the performances, the rounds. Every single round, you're like, oh, mm. I, w- I want to make sure I do good every single round. Once you played your first game, I presume, like, you just started locking in more, and you got used to it, and mm. how did you find the rest of the games? Yeah, I think, yeah, once around. once I got through the first one, I was, yeah, feeling much more comfortable with the whole setup and everything, and, yeah, just trying to stay completely zoned in to the actual yeah. games. Like, not even thinking about, honestly, who I was playing as much, like, just... Mm every round that comes up that's that's the only thing in my head is i have to guess as best as i can here so yeah just tried to yeah stay completely level-headed play my absolute best and yeah i think that was the right right way to go about it and overall smooth sailing i think after the first game i like also you only got 10 rounds so like there are quite a few pros and cons of the 10 rounds and you know the multi squint towards the end making them more significant towards the end Mm. but at the same time it, you know, the early rounds could also be just as important because if small countries come up, it'd be very hard to get that health back, even on high multis. So, like, right. having those 10 rounds, like, I've only got 10 rounds. 10 rounds is probably like only going to be, like, 10, 15 minutes, and that's it. That's the game. And I, I feel like you can concentrate more on individual rounds because you know there'll be a, an end to the game. There's, there's, there's a set mm. point where the game will end, whereas, like, in other tourneys, there's no round limit. It's just until... The multis get that high and the health runs out, knowing the amount of rounds you have. But you say it helped you with like concentration and caring more about each round? Yeah, honestly, I I didn't really consider the ten round limit that much, like when I was playing, like until I made it to you know like round seven, eight, and I'm realizing like, okay, we're almost at the end here. Um but yeah, I think overall I, I honestly that's it's a good point you bring up, yeah. Like but I, I feel like for me it like I didn't think about it all that much until it came down to the end. I'm like, okay, it's yeah. it's gonna end soon. Like I remember, I had, in my game versus Jupa, like I I think he had the slight advantage. We had Jerba Tunisia for our final round. Like we both know that, and so like we know that it's it's set in stone. Like our health right now is just gonna be the tiebreaker. So yeah, like I think once we made it to the end, that got into my head. And like, all right, I can't really try too hard in these last couple rounds because it won't change things too much at this point but yeah i think it was definitely an interesting way that the the tournament is organized and yeah very different from any other competitive scene so far like i say you know you didn't realize at first because you're like in the zone you're just playing you're locking in you're playing like you the best you can and then it's that realization where like we're towards the end and then you either have like small country rounds like oh it's over i should have got something more off of the previous round or maybe not rush guest or whatever and then you yeah. have then you might be doing really well and then it comes to round the second last round, you get a massive country, and you're like, "Oh no, why is this high multi now with the my country? I don't want to come up." Yeah. So there's always that risk of leaving it till too late, and mm-hmm. there's also that risk of not getting it done towards the end as well. So like, there's yeah. there's two kind of different pressures coming in, and like I say, it's just kind of filtering it out and just doing the best you can each round. You kind of also have to not think about the past rounds either like one thing i realized especially in day two i don't know about it probably happens a lot in day one as well is there was a lot of reaction uh with previous rounds like there were quite a few competitors i would say that we had a bad round let's say they did a mistake and then the reaction because of that uh, made them not really do as well in the other rounds or the next round and also i think that had a massive part to play especially in the last eight like people like Consus and Fung- fungus they would make like one bad guess but like they've completely moved on from it and mm-hmm. and for Consus that was a massive a massive thing to have because he, he you right. know he would make the odd mistake but he wouldn't let it get to him he would move on mm-hmm. did you have any moments like that in your games where like you had a round but maybe didn't go right for you and then how do you feel like you responded when that did happen yeah i think the the one game that comes to mind for that kind of thing is the my game versus wolf trucker where i think it was mainly the no moving game where 
we just got, I think we only lasted a few rounds because I, I wasn't playing very well, but we just had all big countries and I just started region guessing in like the first couple rounds not very well. And it was just getting into my head. Like I knew this game was being broadcasted and I realized that I wasn't guessing as well as I should be. Uh, and I think that definitely just like it co all compounded upon itself. And I think, yeah, that that was my one game where I, I felt the pressure really get to me. Like, like, like the good thing though is it's an experience that you can learn from and also like you know if you obviously want to go for it again qualify get into it until the next year's one like it's something that you've experienced that maybe any new competitors would not have experienced and if you train yourself to be more better you know react better to rounds would go wrong that can make a, a very small differences and those small differences especially with so many amazing players can make the difference between you winning and losing a game uh, especially right. when it's big countries as well and talking about the second day how did you find you know being in front of the front row watching your friends battle it out last day like how was the entire experience of being part of the crowd and just the whole the whole day yeah that day was just something completely special and i yeah i remember walking into the arena and seeing everybody seated waiting for the games to start and like they had the front rows like sectioned off for us and that was just something amazing i'll never forget that uh, and yeah just i i think like being able to see people playing there like as you said like being so close to them and it was something just so incredible like it's hard to really put into words like all the emotions i was feeling at that moment like yeah i just think it was something so fun it exceeded expectations. Like I remember when I arrived, Stockholm was like, "I'm just really looking forward to meeting everyone." And then the first day, I'm like, oh, "Oh my gosh, the the approach is amazing." It's just like just mesmerizing. You just lost for words with how everything was. And the second day was incredible. Mm -hmm. Like going to the stage, watching watching everyone, you know, play, and even you know, with some amazing guesses. Like I remember when when Fungus got like 5k and the roof came off in the Turkey round. That yeah. like stuff like that is just, you know, it's that's like moments that you'll always remember, and mm. they will definitely not age. And like mm. obviously, as as the competition got closer and closer, we had some unbelievable games. Like we had Tribor and Radu, amazing consistent guesses, super close. Then we had like Blinky, Radu. We had Blinky, Consus in the final, and obviously we also had the Fungus two 0 down against Consus to make it two all, and that rush around. Oh, yeah to make the difference like it's it's crazy like to watch watch it and also you know you try and put yourself in those players shoes and think the amount of pressure extra pressure because you're doing it in front of like over hundreds of people over tens well well over tens of thousands of people live and mm. to keep that level ahead and just still 5k and i, I just don't like i was absolutely bricking it in pre qualities like i can't imagine <laughs> i can't imagine going through that i'd be like I don't yeah. know, but it just shows how much respect you have for those, for everyone who qualified, took part, like yourself, and those who got to the last eight. Because, like I say, there's one thing playing well, and then it's the pressure. You're playing in front of people. It's broadcasted. Your family's probably watching. Your friends are, are watching. You know, like, it's really hard to, like, keep level-headed and to lock in in that environment, whether you're favourite to win or whether you're just the underrated and just showing what you can do like it makes a massive difference crazy to think about would you say yeah. would you say the final day was like you know when Consus lifted the trophy and when everyone raised the roof would you say that, that was the best moment or do you have any other other ones as well yeah i think that I, i've got to say that was probably my favorite moment just like the wave of emotion that i felt seeing that like it it, like I remember thinking like time was flying by so fast on that second day and then we just I somehow made it to the end and Consus was the winner lifting the trophy like everyone's just standing ovation cheering I it was just like hard to process that it was even real and yeah you know, I, I I was tearing up standing there and just like being next to everybody in the in the audience as well all my friends and these players and everybody who came across from around the world to see it like yeah that was surely like the most memorable thing um uh, but then also like beyond just the event itself just like exploring stockholm with people like i remember we went to get some kebab pizzas with a bunch of people and yes, yeah just like yes. that kind of thing yeah. yeah that was always a good time and yeah just like being able to explore a city that I, i'd only been to once before and just with my family just like experiencing a pretty much new place um, with these people who i'd only seen online before it was something that i'll, I'll always cherish yeah 
like I couldn't agree with you more. Like, like in terms of the moment where Kansas lift the trophy, the crowd going electric, and just being part of the crowd was, you know, a memory in itself. And you know, seeing that photo, that will be history. That will always be there. And to be part of that, with you know, it doesn't matter if you were playing or you were sitting there cheer- cheering everyone on. Like that is history. You were there, and you experienced all of that in person. Like that's just. It's just crazy and like I feel like the community has never been as close together now, especially like, you know, with how well the, the event was organized. I think the, the mm-hmm. developers, the casters, everyone did an amazing, amazing job and shout out Rainbow as well for what what he did too. And mm-hmm. you know, it's it's put GeoGuess in a really good place, like the amount of people amount of reach it got as well, how successful it was, like it's definitely a good thing for the future for the game and also the community and um, like right. i say the kebab the kebab pizza man oh that was <laughs> what, what a day that was uh, oh yeah <laughs> i kind of broke the rule and i and i didn't have a kebab pizza in a kebab pizza shop but please oh, please don't 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 don't, don't uh, fall out with me <laughs> but um yeah like it's just crazy because for you said that was your second time in stockholm for me that was my first ever time well, it was my first time traveling abroad for five years, and it was my first ever mm. time solo traveling abroad. And I didn't meet anyone, so it was a complete, like, I did not know what to expect. Like, yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone, but I just have no idea. It's kind of like, I'm getting myself there, I'm at least watching everything, and if I, hopefully I'll bump into as much people as I can, but it was so worth it, like, especially, like, you know, I didn't quite, obviously, I went through pre-qualifiers, didn't make it, and, you know, it motivated me to go to the World Cup even more because I felt like it's something, it's going to be something special. I'm really looking forward to just meeting everyone mm-hmm. and to be there, just meeting everyone, which is so surreal. And like, you know, I've never met anyone in the community before. So that it was a real, like, brand new thing for me. And yeah, like like you said, it was just unbelievable. The city was so beautiful. Maybe not on the Sunday morning. I was a bit, I was a bit on the ropes. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, you know, just the whole... The whole like few the, the whole event or the whole time in Stockholm, everything was memorable. Me and everyone, the night out after the finals, that will never be forgotten. Like just <laughs> wild, amazing, crazy, and you know saying goodbye to everyone, and you know just eating pizza with Rainbow in the kebab shop before I started packing up. Like it's just crazy. Uh, just to think yeah. about two years ago, where the community was at, like it was still in an amazing place, but to see how much it's grown since and to have such a massive event and to try it as an esports like it shows now how much of how much potential it has got can't believe it <laughs> <laughs> i feel the same way um i'm curious um because obviously we talked about the a lot of people what tuned in a lot of viewership tens you know tens of thousands fifty thousand people at least you know from all platforms we're watching it and you know it's going to bring in a new wave of players you know regardless and it's also motivated a lot of you know players who maybe have not played for a while like quite a few have come back and they're motivated they want to get into geoguess again whether it is more for the casual side or more for the competitive side and what would your advice be for those who are just starting out uh what would you advise them to do in terms of playing geoguessr for fun or just to get better and also for more experienced players yeah that's that's a really good question um i think i just speaking to personally like how i learned a lot of what i know today about the game is i i just played a lot i just like a lot of my um streams on twitch that i would do i would just be doing mainly to learn doing a bunch of like assisted country streaks uh and all things like that just like i think for a new player, I think it's really important to hop into the community like as fast as possible, be that through Discord servers or joining people's Twitch streams, watching videos, just like finding some section of the community and really involving yourself with that. I think that's the best way to learn because the community has so much knowledge and I think just playing with everybody, being part of the community as fast as you can, I think that's that's like the really the best way to go about it. Um, and then like, yeah, I think experienced players, like it's sort of similar, but like hop into like the more research like specific things like people doing very intensive meta research and things like that um i think that yeah just being part of the community uh finding something that speaks to you and just going all in playing the game i i, I would suggest that yep like, i totally agree as well especially for new players like two years ago there was still a lot out there but it's nothing like now and i feel like a lot mm-hmm. of new players will i mean like i say the first step is just to play like you said play games like i say 
you own like there's there's one element of learning and memorizing things and there's the other element of what we call vibe guessing and like i say you know getting familiar with envi- you know general what countries generally look like or continents if you're very new it's kind of like not rushing too much and like if you hop into twitch streams you generally will take like a few things like especially like with your streak attempts and there are so many other amazing streams out there that that are very educational and will help any player whether you're brand new or whether you're experienced there's always something to learn and Mm. it's not as much thrown your face like like with the guides it's kind of just like if there's a round and there's something there they'll you know it's explained and you know like i say pretty much everyone who streams is always open to try and say what gave it away or direct you to what helped them give it away and Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very, very good point to make. And like I say, it would be great to see more people on Twitch go into the streams or streaming themselves. Like even just like just starting streaming yourself, I feel like it would be a good starting point. And um, like I say, if, as long as you like just get into the community and get familiarized with that, then start streaming and build up from there, that will definitely help you. And I feel like there's a good, yeah. mo- it's, a be- it's a very good moment now to do that. And I feel like any... GeoGuess, you know, any GeoGuessr community person who's really got into the GeoGuessr stuff can stream and they'll get a fair reception. It's not like mm-hmm. um, a real, like a, oh, I don't know, like a game like Rocket League or FIFA where you will struggle to get anything at first. You will get people joining regardless. Yeah. With guides, there's so many on Plonkit. Region Guessr Meta Library with Lupus is a really great one as well. Like, if you want to learn more, that is another good place. If you want to specialize in a country, like, you know, everyone's you know not everyone has to learn the same way obviously like there's different ways of learning and if you just want to get really good at a country like say you know the us you can join you know us your us discord server your discord server or if you know there's also other international communities out there that are doing their own thing that you can learn from and you know to, to get just get yourself out there get yourself on these discord channels like you said and you will come across information you'll play these daily challenges and there's always discussion with those daily challenges you can just learn just by that like you know especially like experienced players there's always some weak point in a certain country that like myself like russia I'm like oh god good luck with that um i still need to learn it but like now i i've studied certain countries like cambodia uh botswana in like probably like i took my time probably two three weeks of learning the whole of Botswana and the east side of Cambodia and I'm road guessing and you know and like I say I, I wouldn't put myself high up in the bracket at the moment but like I say any experienced players in the community for a while can do that stuff and as long as you take your time do what you like do what you enjoy and you'll be surprised at how much you can do just gradual building blocks and just being patient like I feel like you would definitely do well if you grind hard but also have patience in yourself and don't put too much expectation on yourself to begin off with. Like I say, the results will show for themselves. And if you get a, get a country badly wrong, then obviously that's feedback directly to you. And that's how you get better is find out what you're weak at, get stronger at it. And like I say, I think with a lot of pro players, there's a lot of people who are like now watching the World Cup thinking, right, I really want to get into this, but they have to study twice as much, they have to study twice as hard. But I feel like also you have to not put too much pressure on yourself and just enjoy it and have fun. Because like I say, I find it near impossible if you're having a long day, you're trying to learn something off a guide, you're probably not going to remember much of it. Whereas if you're having a good day or you take your time and you taking things in slowly, then you're probably going to learn it better. How to prepare for the World Cup to get better and be prepared for for the games? Yeah, so I think maybe this is very specific to like my my own like play style and personality. But honestly, I didn't really prepare too much. I will say I tried to just like take my mind off of it, and I figured like if I tried to cram so much, you know, in the in the weeks right before it, that I just put too much pressure on myself in that way. I feel like that's something that just in general for myself, like trying to cram never really works for me. So what I what I did is just tried to not think about it, honestly. Uh, but I think, like, for anyone else, like, whatever works best for you, if, it, if it's beneficial for you to, like, cram and try to learn information as much as possible in a short amount of time, then I think that's a, definitely a valid strategy. Um, but for me, I think it was important to just take a bit of time and just 
reflect on, okay, I'm going to be in the World Cup. I, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself and just yeah, just go into it with what I know and see how it goes. Have you got um, any last things you'd like to add, uh, Chicago, before we end the interview? Any final words, anything about the event, players, just anything? Yeah, I think just overall, I, I just had such a great time, like, meeting you, meeting everybody else who was playing, and, you know, like, having people come up to me in the, you know, in, like, the party space and just, like, saying, I'm a big fan of your videos, can I get a picture with you? Like, I think that was something that also was a highlight for me, and because in the past, I'd only been approached by, you know, maybe a couple fans at most, and that was just mainly because I'd put myself out there at my university and, like, had it in my bio that I went here, so, like, people at my school would know who I was. Uh, but this was the first time, like, completely people, like, that I had never met before had, like, approached me, and that was something really cool. So, yeah, I think overall, I'll just, like, every little detail of this whole event, I'll cherish forever. Uh, so, yeah, I was so glad to be a part of it. Yeah. Like, I saw quite a few of the side, the signatures and stuff as well, and there was quite a few people who were saying, like, their friends were messaging the, like, realized, oh, wait. I know this guy. He he went to the same school as me. Why is he on this? And then, you know, it's crazy, like, how much of a small world you live in. And, you know, mm -hmm. you get fans like, like I say, you've been doing Geoguest for a very long time. Yeah. Like, you're one of the OGs in the community. And, you know, seeing your channel grow as big as it has on YouTube and Twitch is really inspiring. And it's motivated a lot of people in the community. So, like, like I say, man, you do, you do, you, you know, you're, Everything you've done is you've deserved it. You've deserved you've you deserved all that support from how much work you put in, and like like I say, you know, you've, that moment in the World Cup's always going to be a memory forever. I didn't really have much luck with people recognizing me, <laughs> even the people who who knew me VCs. I have my glasses on, and nobody, not many people recognized me with my glasses at first, which is quite funny. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> look, luckily Trick to recognize me straight away. But quite a few are like looking at me, you know, when they think they know it's you but don't and they kind of like stare at you for a bit longer it's like okay they know it's me but they're not sure about the glasses uh, yeah. like some <laughs> some superman stuff going on you know <laughs> but um but yeah like it's crazy it's crazy to see how much change in like from even for me for like a year like to starting point before the rainbow tournaments to now it's just crazy how much it's grown since then and right, yeah. i just gotta say thank you so much man like you know for accept interview and you know it's sharing your experience very happy that you were there and it was great to meet you in person as well and have some pizza in a kebab pizza shop you know in stockholm you can't really beat that um oh, yeah. and yeah all i gotta say is keep up the grind man and hope to see you in the next one you know represent yourself for the community again awesome man yeah thanks so much for having me it was great talking with you about this and yeah thank you for the kind words as well it really means a lot yep you're welcome man and yeah, catch you next time.